China as a warning about the potential for violence from an animal rights group. Do you see a difference between them and Al Qaeda? Really, a little bit general. Animal rights behemoth organization. It is a lie. What do you think about the label of terrorists? We're going to go out and hate you. Did we're you or did them. you not? Are you guilty of what they charge you? Huntington Life Sciences. We can shut it down. Uh, you know, where do you draw this line? Investigating and preventing animal rights extremism is one of our highest domestic terrorism priorities. I guess like, I've always felt sympathy for the underdog, regardless of really what cause it was. Something just kind of snapped for me that these animals' rights and their suffering was being overlooked. The first time I was arrested, my mom said, it's about time. Huntington was picked because it's one of the worst of the worst. We've been inside of this lab five times with undercover cameras recording what happens to the animals. What goes on inside of there is cruel and it's wrong. The group, which the FBI characterizes as extremist, is called SHAC for Stop Huntington Animal Cruelty. We do a lot of our demonstration organizing across the country, figuring out which targets are where and what sort of pressure needs to be put on them. And we start going to the companies that Huntington needs to survive, but are companies that don't need Huntington. What we do is protected by the First Amendment of the United States. It may be controversial, but it is legal. There are men sitting on the top floor making those decisions, and those men have addresses. They're a huge company, extremely powerful, and a grassroots campaign with no paid employees had brought them to their knees. From Citibank, Merrill Lynch, Charles Schwab, E-Trade, HSBC have all dropped their investments in Huntington. Changes aren't going to come about because of legislation. They're not going to come about because of polite letter writing campaigns. They're going to come about because a small group of angry, dedicated people were willing to go out and exercise their rights and push the envelope. There's no more selfless movement than animal rights. You know, humans aren't gaining anything. In fact, they're probably losing a lot from fighting for animals. They're violent, they're terrorists, they're this, they're that. No one has ever been injured in an action carried out by animal rights activists. I've been, you know, punched and hit before by vivisectors. I've had a guy swing a metal pipe at my head. I've had guns pointed at me. I was hit about 40 to 50 times. And I was charged with a felony assault on a police officer. I don't even know where to begin when looking at this. Both of my charges stem from a speech I made at the University of Washington. In the 50 some odd page indictment, my name comes up once. And that is that I was at a protest. They don't actually ever even allege that I told people to send faxes. They allege that Shaq did, and I'm affiliated with Shaq. I'm indicted on a charge of animal enterprise terrorism for utilizing the internet with intent on causing economic damage. Last year, the Senate Judiciary Committee met to deal with the Shaq problem. Part of me wants to believe that justice will prevail. They comb through all your personal things. They take it for years at a time. They listen to your phone calls to your mother, to your partner, to other friends. They're creating case law that will say that a legitimate form of boycott, a legitimate it form of protest, criminality, still would be considered to be illegal. We always have somebody in our house 24 hours a day to protect our computers, to protect our files. The FBI can't do the same thing to us that they did to so many other social justice movements. I don't think this necessarily has to do with animal rights. I think this has to do with the idea of domestic dissent, domestic resistance. Who knows if the government gets their way, I'll be down in Guantanamo with the other terrorists. It's far from finished, but I will finish it. You have to serve my jail time, get out, and start doing it again. It was, a, it was an exciting thing to be a part of it, it was history making. We have to win. If the prosecution wins this case, I will have lost all faith in the First Amendment. So, the outcome of this trial doesn't just affect the Shack 7, you know, it affects all of our families. Well, I'm, not, I'm not scared of prison. I can handle prison. I have to um, move my whole life out to New Jersey and drop everything that I had going and go on trial at a federal court. I don't get to see my baby anymore.
In the last few years, I've certainly seen things happen that I never would have previously believed could happen in America.